Hey Squishies, back again with another vlog. This is a Dirty Pair episode 3. I have no idea what the episode title is. Um, but it was a really good one. Uh, I enjoyed it quite a lot. Um, there's just so many things in it to enjoy. I mean, it wasn't the most coherent thing I've ever seen. Um, but it was clearly having a lot of fun doing what it was doing, and coherence can be a little overrated sometimes anyway. Um, so, I'm basically just going to run through some of what made this a really fun episode. For starters, um, this is a small thing, but it was kind of the first thing uh, I noticed that I liked was uh, Kay's dress is amazing. Um, that is just a great dress. And I actually really like that because by this point Kay has been thoroughly established as the less traditionally feminine of the two. Um, and, you know, Yuri... I mean, both characters are very performative very consciously aware that they're projecting an image, but the image Yuri projects is very traditionally feminine and traditionally feminine in a very Japanese way. Whereas K is much more tomboyish. And so I like that she gets to have an awesome dress Anyway, that that's not portrayed as being ugly or unsophisticated or anything like that. It's just modification in the image she chooses to project. And specifically, I like that she gets to be a little bit sexually aggressive. Um... She decides she wants to seduce Sydney, and she goes for it, and she's got a great dress for it. That's awesome. Um, I've watched enough anime to know that women owning their own sexuality is not common. It's not that common in American media either. Um, so it's great to see. Like, the narrative doesn't judge her for this, it doesn't punish her for this. It's just like, okay, cool. She gets to pursue a dude. Um, and yeah, he ends up being like a criminal and treacherous in the end, but... That's kind of the genre they're in, because they're kind of doing this, like... Sort of James Bondish thing with, you know, the casino and the being undercover and gadgets and all that stuff. Very, you know, spy action kind of thing. And so you gotta have the femme fatale in that. Except that it's gender swapped. And that's Sydney. So... Kay's interactions with him are very much Bond and a Bond girl, or the noir hero and the uh, femme fatale. Although, there's not really a noir thing going on here, it's just another genre where femme fatales tend to show up. So you get the same sort of interaction, even though it's packaged a little differently. Mm. And it's you know, done really well. I really like the whole series of ploys and counterploys going on between them and Sydney, uh, where Sydney is basically manipulating uh, AW3. Is that what it's called? AW3? Yeah. Uh, no, W3C. I think it's W3C uh, is the name of the organization that Kay and Yuri belong to. He's manipulating that to bring them in as part of this elaborate four-year, apparently, plan where he was playing two separate roles 
uh, the servant and the old fortune teller woman, which is a strange character to have in either a spy thriller or a science fiction action show. That was an odd choice, so it actually makes sense that she's a disguise being worn by someone else, that she's not, you know, actually a character in that setting. Um... And then there's the back and forth swaps with the chip that finally results in, of course, Kay fooling Sydney repeatedly um, and going off with the chip. Um, which, what, e like, that was one of the things that I could not get. What was the significance of the chip? Like, it almost reminded me of. Scrooge McDuck's Lucky Dime, that, like, it's a poker chip that the gambling dude has on display, and it's special somehow, but for some reason that imbues it with magical significance. Like, uh, Karl Barks and Don Rosa, who are kind of the definitive comic artists, for Scrooge McDuck, uh, were both very adamant that while the, uh, that while McDuck's number one dime, that it wasn't a lucky dime, that it did not create his fortune. It was imbued with magical properties because it was the foundation of his fortune, it was the first money he ever earned, and he became the richest person in the world. But, and that's why, like, Magic of the Spell was always after it, was because, not because it was magical and thereby created his fortune, but because creating his fortune imbued it with magic. And I almost feel like there's something like that going on with this poker chip, that basically it's a MacGuffin. It's... Significance is that people want it. And so, can Yuri go to get it? And it's not really clear why. I mean, there's obviously an illegal operation going on here. I find it very unlikely that it's legal to invite guests over and then film them being, you know, fighting for their lives against monsters that you created or something. Um, and, like, getting people together to bet on the outcome of that and all. Pretty sure that's got to be illegal. But they're not there to investigate that. They're there to get the chip. Mm. I'm also now really wondering if uh, the Cowboy Bebop episode that introduced Faye Valentine wasn't uh, referencing this episode. It's also set in a uh, casino. It also involves, like, a chip that is significant in this case because the poker chip, if I remember correctly, it's been a long time since I saw it, but if I remember correctly, the poker chip contained a computer chip inside it, which was the actual significant thing. And you've got the same thing of the uh, femme fatale equivalent character and the hero that go back and forth tricking one another. Um, in order to get their hands on it, if I'm remembering right. Mm, there, of course, it was not gender-swapped the way it was here. So it was a male hero and a female femme fatale. Um, but I'm not really wondering. It was probably homaging this episode, wasn't it? I imagine there are probably lots of uh, references to Dirty Pair in later science fiction anime that I never got because I never watched Dirty Pair. Honestly, never watched that much science fiction anime, which is odd considering that I'm generally a fan of science fiction. Just with anime, I usually gravitate toward uh, shoujo, uh, which tends not to be science fiction. Shoujo science fiction is sadly rare. Um, but yeah. Uh, that was all really good. Um, the thing I love the most about it is the complaining at the beginning. 
They're like, oh, we were supposed to be on vacation. We're getting dragged in for this. Like, and then just the, like, the, the silliness of it. That they're complaining about getting dragged in because they were supposed to be on vacation. They're, like, the way everyone is a terrible driver in this episode uh, is a running gag from, like, Kay and Yuri causing massive pileups every time they turn a corner. Uh, Sydney sends Kay and Yuri flying every time he turns a corner through the hedge maze, which, by the way, that's awesome. A hedge maze that you drive through, that's cool. Um, and then uh, Mugi and the robot whose name I'm blanking on uh, just crashing through every hedge in the maze and then falling in a trap. Um, nobody can drive in this episode. And it's great. Um, what else is there to say about this? Um, as always, it looks really good. Um, there was some music in there that was just great. Uh, I think it was the establishing shot when they first arrived at the casino um, that had this just great music that I was expect any second to turn into like an 80s pop song um yeah just all around good fun stuff continue to enjoy this I'm continuing to look forward to doing more so see you all next time Bye.